Welcome back. In this lecture, we will discuss about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Suppose I have a vector v as I have shown here in the diagram. And now, I want to stretch it by a particular scalar value, right? I want to make it longer or suppose I want to reduce its size, right? For example, uh, suppose I want to stretch it by a scalar amount lambda. So, a lambda is a scalar. Right. For example, uh, it can be a 2 suppose lambda equal to 2. That means, I want to stretch this original vector v and make it double in size and or sometime suppose I take a negative value minus 2 or something. So, that the vector's direction change the opposite direction. So, in both the cases, in both the cases what I, I want to do, I want to either stretch it, squeeze it or flip it in the opposite direction. But always along the same line on the, the, the line that follows the direction of the original vector, right? this uh, yellow line. So, this is called the uh, span of the original vector, the span of the vector. So, I want to do these transformations, this stretching, flipping, squeezing, all these things on this vector v only on that span, nowhere else. I do not want to rotate it in any direction or something like that. right? So, I want to do that and I want to do that using matrix multiplication. We have learned about matrix, we have learned about how we can multiply a matrix and a vector. So, if you remember, if I multiply a matrix with a vector, it spits out a another new vector because you can imagine matrix as a something like a function which takes a vector and it spits another vector, it does a transformation on the vector. So, for example, take this one, A is 1, 2, 4, 5 a matrix and V is a column vector uh, 2, 3, 6. So, I multiply A by V, right? And what do I get? I get 15 and 42. So, this is another new vector, right? So, I can convert one vector to another by multiplying it with a matrix, right? So, we will use this technique so that we can actually uh, stretch, flip, uh, squeeze a given vector, but along its span only in no other direction, right? So, take an example, take the same diagram. Uh, so, the vector given here v is 1 1. So, this is 1 1 vector. So, now I want to extend it by a scalar amount of 3. So, I want to make it uh, 3 by 3, right? So, lambda here in this case is 3. So, I want the, the vector to become thrice in length, but remember on the span, on this yellow line. So, how can I do it? As I said, I want to do it by matrix multiplication. That means, I have to get some matrix which can uh, take this vector 1 and 1 and spit out 3, 3. How can I get that? Okay, suppose I have a machine or I, I am imagining it, right? And I try to get the matrix which can do that. So, one guess that I have made, suppose, is this one. The matrix A is 2, 1, 2, 2. This is my matrix. This is my guess. So, I multiply A with V which is 1, 1. And what I get? I get 3, 4. A vector I got, but its value is 3, 4. So, this is that vector, this yellow colored one. So, this is 3, 4. Okay, it is longer, in length it is longer than my original vector v, but obviously it is not in the span. I want it on the span. So, this matrix has not worked for me. And suppose I have done lots of these matrix, uh, created lots of matrix, tried them, tested them, and eventually I land up with a matrix a, which is 1, 2, 2, 1. And now multiply A with V and you see you get 3, 3. This is nothing but 3 into the original vector 1, 1, right? So, what I have done? I have a original vector V, which I have multiplied with a given vector matrix A, right? 1, 2, 2, 1 and I now had got this pink vector. This is 3 times of original uh, vector. So, this is lambda v or in a way this is 3 into v because 3 is lambda. So, I have found the matrix that I was looking for, right? So, now let me generalize it. I have a vector v and I want to transform it using a matrix A so that that vector now give rise to a new vector or the vector gets stretched, squeezed or flipped or linearly transformed along the span of that vector. 
original vector along this yellow line. So, what I have done? I have multiplied a matrix A with a vector and I have got another vector which is lambda into V because lambda is a scalar. So, if I have this property, if I have this situation where E A into V, A is a matrix, A is a matrix and V is a vector, if I multiply them, I get a scalar into the original vector. So, if you have this situation, if you have this property altogether, then what we say? We say V is the Eigen vector of A, V is the Eigen vector of A and lambda the scalar is the corresponding Eigen value. This is how we define a Eigen value or Eigen vector of a particular matrix A. Right? So, that is the definition. Now, how will you calculate Eigen value and Eigen vectors? Obviously, not by guessing the game that I have shown. Right? So, there are techniques to calculate uh, Eigen value or Eigen vectors for a given matrix. I do not want you to go into details of those. Those calculations are not required. Although, a uh, calculated Eigen value and Eigen vector uh, for a, a square matrix is very easy. It is a school level thing you can use, technique you can use, it do not require complicated thing. But in reality, for our data analysis course, we will not calculate them manually. Our computer program will calculate them. So, you do not need to go there. You can also use online tools. There are online calculators to calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a given matrix. You can try them and that will familiarize you with eigenvalues and eigenvector. And in every result, you can check whether this property that A into V matrix into its eigenvector is equal to eigenvalue into eigenvector or not. You can check that, right? So, I have already done the calculation for the original matrix A. So, for this matrix A, if you take this is 2 by 2 matrix, right? So, this is a uh, 2 into 2, 2 column, 2 row matrix. It has two eigenvalues, lambda 1 and lambda 2. And for each lambda, there is a corresponding vector, eigenvectors, right? So, eigenvector 1 is the corresponding, uh, is the corresponding eigenvalue is lambda 1, that is 3, and the vector is 1, 1. Whereas, for the second eigenvalue, which is minus 1, the vector is minus 1 and 1. So, you can check both this eigenvalues and eigenvector pair will satisfy our requirement. You will find that uh, A into V1 will be equal to lambda 1 into V1. Same A, you take the same A, multiply with the second vector V2 and that will be equal to lambda 2 into v2. You can check that multiplication. I have not told earlier, actually to calculate eigenvalue eigenvectors by definition my matrix must be a square matrix. You can check that out, you can easily prove it. It is not, you do not need to be a mathematician to prove that. You remember the rule of multiplication, how the row and column has to match. If you Oh, now, try to use that, you can easily prove that for a rectangular matrix, you cannot define eigenvalue eigenvector the way we have defined that eigenvalue eigenvector relation is something like this, where well, lambda is a scalar, right? So, you need a square matrix. The second thing, by definition, eigenvector should not be 0. If I multiply a matrix with a 0, obviously I will get back a 0, there is, there is trivial, there is nothing in that, right? So, you are not doing that. Right? So, we are not bothered about a vector which is 0. So, Eigen vector cannot be 0 by our definition. We are dealing with non-zero vectors. And when people calculate this uh, Eigen values and Eigen vector, this is used as a uh, condition to get uh, solve the equations and get the value of Eigen vector and Eigen values. As I said earlier, we do not need to go into those for this course. Now, if I have a n by n matrix, if I have a n by n matrix, at maximum, we can have uh, n number of eigenvalues, right? And remember, eigenvalues can repeat. So, that means, suppose I have three eigenvalues, does not mean that three will be distinctly different numbers. I can have a repetition of two numbers also. Now, so if I have a n by n matrix, the number of eigenvalues will be 
n and the interesting thing is that you look into those n eigenvalues and find out the distinct eigenvectors, right. So, the i sorry eigenvalues. So, you check the distinct eigenvalues, the eigenvectors from those distinct eigenvalues are linearly independent. Now, this is tricky. I have not discussed earlier what is linearly independent. Let me briefly say uh, explain what is uh, linearly independent. So, suppose I have a vector 2, 4. I have another vector 4, 8. So, suppose this is V and this is U. So, you can easily see actually I can get from V to U by multiplying with 2, this is scalar multiplication. So, that means V is nothing but actually a form of U, just a scalar multiplied, right. So, I can convert V to U just by simple multiplication with a scalar term. So, that means U and V are not independent, they are not independent. They are not independent, right? They are dependent on each other. Similarly, you can have a set of vectors, right? And suppose I have to four vectors, and out of four, one is such that I can create them by scalar multiplication and vector addition of rest of the three vectors. So, that means I can combine rest of the three vectors in such a way by addition and multiplication with scalar values, numbers, then I can, can get the fourth vector. So, then I can say there is no linear independency in these vectors, there is dependency in the vectors, right. So, what we are saying here is that if I have uh, suppose m distinct eigenvalues, so there are m eigenvectors also and these m eigenvectors will be linearly independent. This is very important when we will uh, analyze data. And I uh, will uh, remind you this one when we will go into those sections where this principle will be used to analyze the data. Now, another interesting thing which uh, uh, is very useful in our data analysis is the property of eigenvalue and eigen eigenvector for symmetric matrix. Now, before I go into the eigenvalue eigenvector property, what is symmetric matrix? Symmetric matrix is some very simple. If I take a matrix and if I transpose it, remember I uh, swap the rows with columns, then I suppose get back the same matrix. I have a matrix whose transpose is same as the original matrix, then I say that matrix is a symmetric matrix. So, A is a symmetric matrix. Let me give you an example. Suppose A is equal to uh, 2, 4, this is the diagonal and I have 3 here and 3 here. Now, you swap the rows and rows with column, you will get back the same matrix, right. So, this is why this is called a symmetric matrix. Now, the interesting thing is that if I have a n by n symmetric matrix and you will encounter them, for example, when you will calculate the covariance matrix from your data, as I said that will be useful in PCA and also useful in other techniques, the covariance matrix is symmetric. So, that is all uh, for uh, the, prop the basic properties which will be useful for us to understand uh, the use of eigenvalue eigenvectors. Uh, there are lot, as I said there are lots of other properties, I will not go in details of those as and when we will require those properties of eigenvalue and eigenvector, I will discuss them in those particular lectures. So, let me jot down uh, what we have learned in this short video. Uh, I have introduced you to uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector. If a matrix is given to you, then that matrix is suppose A then eigenvector and eigenvalues are V is the eigenvector and lambda is the eigenvalue such that A into V matrix into eigenvectors is eigenvector is equal to the eigen corresponding eigenvalue into eigenvector, right. We have to remember that if I have a uh, n by n ma matrix, then I can have n uh, eigenvalues and then I can have multiple eigenvectors, right. Then we have discussed also about some basic properties of uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors and we have also discussed the in at the very beginning discussed the geometric meaning that how a eigenvalue and eigenvector is actually related to linear transformation by a matrix. So, that is all for this uh, lecture uh, on eigenvalues and eigenvector. Uh, we will uh, discuss further on similar topics in the upcoming lectures. Till then I will leave you with a problem to think over. Suppose lambda is an eigenvalue of m. 
m is a matrix. So what you have to check, not prove, I do not want you to prove it mathematically, this is not a mathematics course on linear algebra, but I want to check you that, check that lambda square is an eigenvalue of m square, the square of the mat original matrix. So what I am asking you to check is that if I have a matrix m and it is one of the eigenvalue of this is lambda, then if I take a matrix which is m square, then lambda square will be also an eigenvalue of that m square matrix, new matrix m square. How will you do it? As I said, it is not a mathematics course on linear algebra, so you do not need to go and make an uh, analytical proof of it. What you do? You take a matrix, you take a small 2 by 2 matrix, put any numbers, reasonable number, do not put a uh, very uh, arbitrary number, put 1, 2, 5, 10, something like that. So, make a 2 by 2 matrix and there are lots of online tools by which you can do matrix multiplication, calculate eigenvalue, eigenvectors. So, use those tool to create a from m to m square. For each m and m square, you calculate the eigenvalue and eigenvectors and see whether this property can be checked is whether this property is correct for your example of m or not, right. So, I hope you will try this one. We will meet again in the next lecture to discuss some new topic of linear algebra useful for data analysis. Till then, happy learning.